Did you ever wonder where they got the inspiration for Arundel from Frozen? Well, now I know, and I'm going to create a scene that shows you the location that probably inspired Arundel. It is Hallstatt in Austria. Let's go and paint it in watercolor in my sketchbook now. So today I'm working on my sketchbook. It is nighttime and I've got a cup of tea and I thought I would continue on my Austria inspiration by using one of the images that some of you might've been questioning where it was in my setups because this is one of the most famous places in Austria, I believe. So this is the most Instagrammed place in Austria and it's called Hallstatt. Um, when I saw the photos of this, I was blown away. It looks incredible, just like from a fairy tale with the Alps in the background and this beautiful um, town that's got a nice church at the end of like a little cusp, little inlet. It was just stunning. So I couldn't wait to get my watercolors out and try and create this in my sketchbook. Now I will go ahead and talk more about the sketching in a bit later, but I did just want to use this opportunity to talk about and show some of the comments that I've been receiving for the bullet journal setup that I did a couple of weeks ago. Now this was my Austria bullet journal setup. If you haven't seen that, I'll link it down in the description box so you can see how I set up the rest of my bullet journal for the month of August in relation to Austria. Now I asked you all to help me out by um, putting your votes in for September and what kind you wanted to see. Now my three, there were so many places to choose from for S, for, so many countries start with S, but I had to narrow it down to three that I felt I didn't know much about, that I wanted to learn more about and what I think I would get inspired for if it did win. So I ended up putting a vote out for Sri Lanka, South Korea and South Africa and you guys have followed through, you have given me your votes and I've really appreciated having them there because it's so much easier knowing, knowing that people are wanting to learn about the same things that I want to learn about. So I thought I'd show them from that video and just go through and do a count as well so we can figure out what is the winner and what setup you will see in a couple of weeks time when I put out my September bullet journal video. So the first votes were for Sri Lanka and I'll tally them down at the bottom so you guys can see as I count how many we get from each place. Um, so the first one's for, from Sri Lanka, then a couple from South Africa, and then it goes to South Korea. And then Tracy says here that she wanted to see South Korea because she actually watches some South Korean shows. And I thought I can officially say I've never seen any South Korean shows. So I feel like I would have to do that for my research. Um, and then interestingly enough, as I was researching Hallstatt, which I am currently painting in the background, I found out that this Hallstatt is, um, I'm trying to say that correctly, by the way, Hallstatt. Um, it is, I said it was the most Instagrammable place in um, Austria. And that was mainly because it was televised in a South Korean show. So I thought that was interesting that here I am, you know, trying to think of options and counting up tallies for South Korea while I'm painting something that actually got incredibly famous from a South Korean show. So I thought that was very, very bizarre. And interestingly too, apparently because tourism became so popular in Holstadt, they actually, it became over over touristy that's not the word they use they say over tourism though there was more tourists than there were people that live in Hallstatt so there were, I think there was about 708 people who lived there and on a day they would get like 100 tourists that was back in 2011 but as of 2020 they were getting 10,000 to 30,000 tourists a day usually by bus tours and things like that so that was just amazing to me and unfortunately, because of how bad that got, there's actually been talks of reducing that number of tourists and only allowing a certain number in. So around 50 or 55 a day. So that would be a very big difference for them. And yeah, I think it would be hard for the locals to have so many people around all the time. And I don't think you'd be able to capture a photograph like this one that I'm painting if you had that many people around all the time. So a little bit about what I'm actually doing to create this Hallstatt picture. Um, I used a color raise pencil in blue just to sketch out where the town was and where the mountains are. And then I'm trying to be very loose with my watercolor and 
just dab it on here and there to try and create a reflection in the water. And then, and then as I usually do, I get a little bit too detailed and I start adding more and more detail to those mountains. Um, in hindsight, I do wish I left those very relaxed and just like drip on the paint, but I can't help it. I just kept going in with some detail. But what I did do is I left the left hand side because I wanted to continue this over the entire spread on my sketchbook to make it like a panoramic shot. But I thought it might be cool to keep it quite loose and relaxed on the left side and get more detailed as you travel to the right hand side where the little town is. Um, I'll show you that at the end, um, showing you how it sort of looks from side to side. Um, but yeah, it kind of keeps it a bit interesting and you, you don't, you don't lose that kind of effect of the watercolor because watercolor is at its best when it's done loosely, I believe. Um, but yeah, unfortunately I just can't stick to the looseness because I love adding intricacies and detail. All right, so in my counting up so far in the tally, I have got one comment here from Anna in regards to her vote for Sri Lanka. And she's saying that she was there two summers ago and it is a very beautiful country. And if it's chosen, she'd love to see Candy and Arugam Bay and even some spreads relating to the temples or tea farms. So that all sounded very interesting to me. So if Sri Lanka wins, I'm sure I will check out those places. So I've got lots of ideas churning for all three of these countries. Um, Lotta gives me some info on South Africa in her comment where she mentions Table Mountain in, um, and Guinea Fowls for her South African vote. I've always wanted to do South Africa anyway because I'm fascinated by it. I'm desperate to go there one day. Um, the scenery I know looks amazing and I have lots of friends and just know heaps of people from South Africa. So it would be interesting to learn a bit more about the country itself. Um, but having said that, we are now in my voting, I'm counting them all up as we speak. And as of now, I'm going to close the votes for um, September month and I'm going to add them all up. The reason I wanted to close the votes um, a little bit earlier than I usually do is because I really want to have the time to research the places better. I tend to get a little stressed right before I upload because um, I'm doing so much research and I'll, there's a lot of drawing that goes into my setups as well. So I wanted to have that extra bit of time um, to spend on the country that wins. So the winner for September, drum roll please, is South Korea. It won by 10 votes underneath Sri Lanka and then there was another five votes beneath that. So yeah, I will be setting up my September bullet journal in the theme of South Korea. I'm so excited to do it. And don't worry if you voted for South Africa or Sri Lanka, I will get round to those countries in the future. So yeah, that this was the little teaser and the spoiler in case you didn't want to know, I'm sorry. <laughs> So now that I've given that juicy bit of information away, I will continue to tell you about what I'm doing in the background here. So I went in and I was adding more detail to the village part of this painting. Um, I'm just using my watercolors now and I'm using quite a small brush to try and get as precise as I can, but it's very hard to get precise with watercolor because it always dries differently to how you lay it on anyway. And you can't work next to the same, next to a piece that's already wet because they blend together. So you have to be quite patient with it or use a hairdryer to dry it off in between. That's what I tend to do. <laughs> yeah, and I'm just adding shades and contrast where I can to try and pop those buildings apart and separate them out. Then once I am happy with all the watercolor where I need it, I love to just add in some finer details using a white pen, a white gel pen or white gouache. And that tends to just make things come together in the end. I always feel like it just adds that bit of detail that you, definition that you need to separate it all because I find watercolor can, or my watercolors can tend to look a little bit flat until I get those final details in. And that's when I am really happy with it. So I am happy with this painting that I've done of Austria. And I really enjoy these sketchbook sessions that I have 
they're quite relaxing and I hope you enjoyed this kind of video where I give you a little insight on how I add up the votes and figure out which is the winner for the next month and also if you haven't subscribed to my channel and you enjoyed this video I make a new one every week so feel free to click the button and subscribe and then just click the bell to hear notifications of when I upload. Don't forget to thumbs up this video too, please, if you enjoyed it. I hope you like watching it. If you do, let me know. Um, yes, I loved my Austrian theme this month and I hope you guys enjoyed it all. And I will see you again in my next video. And don't forget to check out those other links if you're interested down in the description box. And I will see you guys next week. Bye.